Hi all, let's catch up with the world of AI. TSEC season 19 is underway, so really st serious stuff. Division Premier round three. So Leader playing against Scorpio NN, so that's Scorpio Neural Network, not Scorpion, as I might have said in the past. So anyway, let's have a look at this game. C4, the opening scenery set, the English opening. After d4 here, bishop g7, knight c3, d6. So Leela playing white. And this position, it seems up Leela's street. It's a positional opening. White does seem to have a small edge out of the opening. We have knight e7, bishop e3, knight bc6, bishop e2. And here is the end of the book, black castling. So Leela plays queen d2. This seems very logical. Setting up the battery to be able to exchange off maybe the bishops later. Also prepare castling queenside. We have knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. And black swaps off. Does that solve the problems? c5, black commits to a d5 weakness. Knight c6. But d4 is weak. Is black going to generate sufficient counterplay by putting a knight into d4? It does seem a kind of Achilles heel of white structure here. The d4 square. Now Leela plays a very interesting move. I wonder if you can guess what white plays here. What would you play here if I give you five seconds or ten seconds actually to pause the video? White play here. Okay, h4. Yeah, even without castling any side of the board, but it looks likely that white will castle queen side here. h4. Uh, it seems logical. Bishop e6, h5, queen f6, and now white castles queenside, knight d4. We have here bishop d3. If white commits to h takes g, it seems, you know, f takes, there's no real problem here to speak of. Things are adequately protected. Black's getting a bit of play. Uh, black doesn't want to play h takes. That would just lead into trouble, actually. For example, like this would be a disaster. But black doesn't have to get into this nightmare scenario of being hacked to death. So there's no point, it seems at the moment, on the evidence to do anything with that pawn in terms of h takes g6. So you have bishop d3. And now actually black prevents any opening of the h file. g5. Leela installs the dreaded form pawn. Is the form pawn good here? Let's see, king h8. And now this is quite an interesting concept actually in this position the issue for white structurally has been the achilles hill d4 square it's a really kind of annoying knight but surely it really can't be challenged that easily here or maybe you consider knight e2 actually as a way to challenge the knight in fact Leela comes up with knight b5 this is more exotic isn't it because isn't this pawn going to be hanging if black takes on b5? Well, black did that. If black doesn't do anything, say rook a d8. Okay, white doesn't want to take on a7 with the king over here, but knight takes d6 is useful for white. For example, this variation uh, is going to be slightly better for white. White's going to have actually a significant edge there. So... There is actually a threat on the cards here. Knight takes d6, as well as taking off on d4. So black actually did take on b5, and did take the plunge here with bishop takes a2, actually. If not, then maybe white plays king b1 soon to protect a2, very soon, I would say, if I was playing white. Uh, so bishop takes a2, what's the punishment here? Bishop c2 unveils an attack against d6 and also provides support for b3. But there might be a problem with that, queen a1 at some point. We see rook a d8. If bishop e6 here taking off a center pawn is nice and white should be in good shape there. If bishop c4, it turns out here actually, with the bishop not controlling f5, White might be able to do this kind of thing where white's getting a kind of attack. If black stays put, this is just, uh, let's say black stays put with the queen. 
it turns out the Queen's getting in slight trouble and White gets a dangerous attacking position around here, for example, like this. There, there are ways of getting a very good attack, it seems. So anyway, Rook a d8 was played. And we do have Rook h5 and that pawn is protected. If it's just left, as an example, then Rook takes and then taking here and g3. White should have a, an edge here. So Rook g8 is played. Protecting the pawn. Queen d3 and now Rook g6. It looks as though you know this battery could be dangerous for e5 looking at h7. Uh, we have b3 with the idea of trying to trap the bishop at some point. Rook c8 and now in fact indeed e5 is played. Very very interesting move. So e5. Queen takes e5. Here if d takes then queen f5 as an example and you know this bishop's going to be munched potentially with king b2 like this for example after protecting f2 taking preparation to protect f2 and then safely munching the bishop and if c4 instead here by the way this is just again leading to a position where the bishop's going to be munched with due preparation so okay so queen takes e5 was played and we have a forcing move f4 so what's going on here we have queen a1 check if queen takes f4 then king b2 and you know king's going to munch the bishop so f f4 is really uh interesting and encouraged queen a1 check so we have king d2 queen b2 and now white swaps off the queens and this makes the bishop look really even more precarious c4 though is the bishop actually going to be won if rook e6 by the way then rook a1 this position is a safe way of winning the bishop so c4 and we have here bishop takes g6 h takes g6 so black has sacked the exchange to save the bishop and has got quite a few pawns to show for it after taking on f4 if c takes b3 check here then this position it seems as though white's getting an advantage like this it's too dangerous that h7 pawn and this bishop's just stranded and, and useless white's winning that so g takes f4 and we have b4 King h7 and now here a really precise looking move rook de1 if white plays what you might be tempted for rook takes d6 it seems rook e8 is quite useful for black with these pawns around here in this bishop it seems as though white's in for a lot of checks potentially for example uh, that looks um, okay uh, for white anyway but if rook d2 bishop b3 this position uh, here come the checks for example like this and black should be okay with all these checks so it's a very tricky position there seems to be a very precise way of handling it rook c7 was played here if d5 then rook e7 and it's okay to take on f7 with a big advantage for white so rook c7 trying to defend that seven franc Rook e2 hitting the bishop, the bishop moves, and the rooks double. And here d5 is played. If king takes h6, then yes, the rooks use e7. And this is going to be good for white. It's good for white. So d5 was played here, rook e7, d4, and it looks pretty similar actually. Outcome. It's good for white here, it seems. But black has got uh, two pawns for the exchange. The bishop's kind of a bit stranded. The king comes up and takes on f4. And it's an exchange up scenario which is now looking very pleasant for white. So after b6 here, this looks as though white's got that past b pawn to potentially push. And here, okay, the b pawn is pushed there. 
and with the exchange up yeah the rook gets behind the pawn that's useful quite often and as long as the white king doesn't get mated over here this should be fine uh, to convert this so we have a few moves but it looks as though white's blockading black's pawns and making progress with the b pawn and in fact black's king safety now is in big trouble because the rook c8 threatening to checkmate and here it looks as though yes it's all over and in fact check mate to Scorpio neural network so a fascinating game and I must say I'm only touching on some of the key variations I noticed uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes in these games it seems new um, the uh, Leela neural network is less bottlenecked than last season and currently it's had two wins which is remarkable because there's a new star at the, the new stockfish NN and by the way I've also downloaded stockfish 12 which assisted in some of the variations of this game so you can download stockfish 12 if you didn't know that please give me a like on the video if you didn't know that <laughs> anything for likes let's get the let's feed the YouTube algorithms all likes really appreciated uh, um, so anyway so yeah a, a fascinating game leader is in this game playing in a way which is still for you know it seems form pawn centric the form pawns really do play quite often statistically a role in some of Leela's key wins it's remarkable that such a visual artifact is is so common form pawns really haven't been the subject of middle game literature in chess you know in the last 50 years but they, they seem to be a major feature of, of these neural network games over and over again it started as a bit of a joke but really it does seem statistically important um, so okay if you want to uh, check out my new course by the way on Udemy Kings Crusher TV slash opening tango it's got a really good rating at the moment if you want to come to my chat Kings Crusher TV slash discord if you want to come to chess world just kingscrusher.tv or if you prefer the bitly link bitly slash chess world if you register there I'll be able to invite you for a game soon after okay comments questions like share subscribe with the notification bell always appreciated thanks so much